Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeremy. This is Fish and Lone Star and your Texas weekly update. I'm actually going to roll in two weekends and one and break down a couple different scenarios for you. The purpose of these videos is to give you a kind of a behind the scenes reasoning or or explanation for what I was using and what worked, maybe what didn't work. Um, the, the scenarios of the day, so you kind of have an idea of what the what the conditions were like, so that when you're faced with those same conditions, you have a little bit of uh, maybe a learning curve shortened or a little bit of an experience through one of these videos that can help you uh, dial it in and find some fish. So that's kind of the purpose of these videos. What will follow this video though will actually be the on the on the water video of the action as it's taking place. So look for that probably in a day or two following this video. All right, let's dive in. So January 31st and February 7th are the two days we're talking about. I'll start with January 31st. We'll cover it pretty quickly and then we'll jump into February 7th, which was this past weekend and tons of action that day. So going back to January 31st, if you're anywhere around Texas, Dallas, Oklahoma, that area, you know that that weekend we had probably 20 to 30 mile hour winds all weekend long. So I made what I believe was a smart decision to stay off the lake. I did not take the boat out. I went bank fishing. I was gonna to put together a whole video about it, but quite honestly, caught one fish. So as I'm talking, I'll show you the clip um, of, of that catch. But I'll tell you the conditions as well. So it was a, a high sky, meaning sunny, sunny day, not many clouds, but crazy wind. So I was bank fishing in a, uh, we'll just call it public. It's pretty public as many people fish there, uh, but a public, neighborhood lake it's probably about a 10 to 15 acre lake so pretty good size not like a little acre or two acre pond i mean it is a big at least a little bit bigger lake but big enough to or small enough to walk around so i walked around to an area that has kind of a point and uh so a, a, a jet if you will coming out off the bank and the wind was coming kind of across that point and i was able to find grass there now i threw a lipless crank i threw a swim bait i threw multiple things in there looking for a reaction bite etc not really sure if it was the wind or the high sun, but the fish just weren't having it. So I've told myself this year, I want to get better at using a jig. So that's what I did is I threw a jig. Now I will tell you though, this is the first fish I've caught on the new Adrenaline Crawl by Egg Zone Lures. So I'll show it to you there. That is the green pumpkin blue flake. And that's on a six cents hybrid uh, I think a six inch hybrid jig. I think that's what it's called. I can't remember. Anyways, that's the adrenaline crawl. I did, you can tell the skirt's pretty well trimmed up. The the uh, the bait itself, the adrenaline crawl is trimmed up as well. And it's a little bit of a compact jig. And the way I caught that fish was literally just dragging. I cast it beyond the grass and was dragging that lure up to the grass really slowly, almost like you would a Carolina rig. And right as I got to the grass, I kind of popped it in the grass a little bit, felt some resistance, kind of checked the fish and set the hook. And uh, it was it was definitely not uh, a very big fish per se, uh, but but a fish nonetheless. So I did not get skunked that day. Uh, crazy, crazy high winds, but didn't get skunked that day. Let's fast forward now to February 7th. Two days ago, I'll tell you the conditions. We started off air temps were probably about 36 to 38 degrees was in kind of northeast Texas on a private lake. So I was fishing a private lake. It's actually Timber Lake that's a part of private water fishing and was a, an amazing, an amazing property, even for the first week of February. Now, water temps were between 48 to 50 degrees. We found one spot that hit 50, but the rest was pretty much 48 to 49 degrees. And the majority of the fish were probably in that seven to 10 foot range of water and tight to cover. They were tight to the trees. So, I th you know, yeah, the cooler air temps, uh, it was a really cloudy day as well, so not much sun. The sun actually came up right around two o'clock, which is when we called it quits. We got on the water about 8.30, and it was pretty much all moving baits. We threw, we threw a couple of slower, like I was tossing a jig around some of the, the submerged trees and timber, but nothing was happening with the jig. All moving baits. What I probably caught the majority of fish on, which which was my new Lose Hypermatic Reel. <laughs> this thing is amazing. I absolutely love it. But I have that pair of my TFO 
Tactical Elite Heavy Rod. The whole combo weighs 10 ounces, uh, and, and, and I love it. You can find these rods at Shields. You'll see the logo on my boat, but Texas Shields Outdoors is their outdoor page. Uh, there's a, a store in the colony or in Dallas at Shields, but they have these rods. They're phenomenal. Make sure you check out Shields. They're actually sponsoring this video. Uh, but the main thing I caught them on, though, was the swim jig. And that is the uh, Six Sense swim jig with the Exome Swammer. And that particular color is Brim. Uh, the Exome Swammer color, that kind of blue and white, and is a great shad imitation. I started off throwing a bluegill color, and they did not want bluegill at all. Uh, and I know there's bluegill out there, but they really wanted kind of that white uh, shad color. Uh, so that's what I ended up throwing. Now, I was fishing with Jacob Talley from Persistent Fishing. I'll link his Instagram page below. Uh, great dude, local firefighter, uh, I, which, you know, kind of near and dear to my heart because my brother and dad are both firefighters, or my dad's retired, but both Dallas firefighters. Um, so, so really good dude. We went out, but he actually tuned in first to the bike that he was catching fish on, which was basically a, uh, a chatterbait that was similar to this one here. So I'll tell you about the one I have, but he was catching, uh, quite honestly, right off the bat, he caught three, probably within the first 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour, but pretty quickly caught three fish on kind of a white, I would call it dirty white chatterbait. Um, at that time I was throwing the bluegill, so I switched over to a swim jig, just to see if they would bite a swim jig. And I thought I could work it through some of that submerged timber a little bit better than a chatterbait. And then we both started getting bites. We probably caught 20 on the day. The biggest was four pounds that Jake had caught. I caught one that was probably three and a half-ish, uh, somewhere in there. Um, but I did catch uh, I, I did catch at least one, if not two, on the Stealth Blade. So that's Stealth Blade by Jackhammer. I'm sorry, the, the Jackhammer Stealth Blade by Z-Man. Uh, but also with that white Swamer. I think that is their pearl flake, I think is what it's called, but the white swimmer. Um, and, and I did use the 3.5 inch swimmer size because this stealth blade, as you can tell, is a smaller blade, a little bit of a scaled down, almost like a finesse chatterbait, if you will. Uh, so I, I caught a couple on that, and I will tell you, uh, the rod that I use for my chatterbaits exclusively now, for my chatterbaits, is the TFO Tactical Glass Rod. And I'm throwing it on my tournament MP if I lose. Um, but this rod, a fiberglass rod, the reason why it's helpful for throwing a, a chatterbait, I explained this in another video, but I'll explain it here really quickly. The reason why it's helpful to throw a glass rod is the, a glass rod is gonna have a little bit of a, of a, of a dampened, oh, that's the right word. It's not quite as sensitive as say, a composite rod. So you're not gonna feel the bite quite as much because as soon as you feel the bite, you normally have that reaction to, to set the hook. So what a glass rod does is it helps dampen the feel a little bit. Now, keep in mind your chatterbait is swimming like this, right? The blade shaking in front. Now, when a bass goes to bite that, that bladed jig, if you immediately feel that and you go to set the hook, look where your line tie is attached to. It's attached to the blade right here. And you notice when I pull it, what happens? It kind of pops up. So if you go to set the hook immediately as soon as you feel it and you pull, you're gonna blow the fish's mouth open and the hook, it's just gonna come right back out. So the benefit of the glass rod, two things. One, <clears throat> when you feel that, by the time you feel it, the fish has consumed the bait, it's down in its mouth. And then when you go to set the hook, the hook's already in the fish's mouth, not necessarily the blade tip. And because of the way this rod has its parabolic bend in the tip, I'll show you, it absorbs head shakes from the fish. So you're gonna keep that fish pinned and you're gonna land them in the boat. I absolutely love, love this rod for my chatterbaits. I won't throw anything else for chatterbaits. Um, it is a, a kind of a moderate action, 7.4 medium heavy rod uh, for, I think it's 140, 140 or 150. But check out Shills, they'll have them as well, but this is a phenomenal setup for your lipless cranks, medium diving cranks. Uh, there's a 7.2 version as well for shallow cranks and of course for chatterbaits. So check out that rod, but we definitely caught uh, some good fish on chatterbaits. And then the last thing that I wanna show you that I did catch a fish on as well, um, I didn't commit to throwing this as much, but it's just an awesome, awesome lure, 
is by Smash Tech, a four inch weedless gizzard shad. And this thing is pretty darn awesome. But look at the color and the design in that thing. I mean, that is pretty sweet. That is a Fibot Trocar underspin hook that it's on, but it fits perfectly. Right now the hook is kind of sticking out the top. If I was to adjust it, uh, it becomes completely weedless. But caught a really good fish uh, on that Palto swim bait. I've got a couple more of these. I'm gonna do a whole video though on the swim baits that I purchased from Smash Tech. So you'll be able to see uh, this one along with several others that I recently uh, picked up from Smash Tech because they too are making some great, some great lures. All right guys, that is a wrap, but make sure you subscribe to the channel because coming is gonna be the on the water video of myself and Jacob at Persistent Fishing crushing them out at Timber Lake, which is a private water fishing property. I will drop all these things below, shills, TFO rods, private water fishing, smash tech, all the baits, all the lures I was using, egg zone lures, etc. They'll all be links below so you can check them out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment below. Let me know if you've used the stealth blade yet, that kind of finesse jackhammer. Let me know what you think about it. I'll show you the on the water video coming up. And if nobody told you today, God loves you. And so do I. Peace out.